Lesson 149. N. This one's not too hard to remember because it sounds just like our English preposition in, right, Catherine? Right. All we do is change what in English is an I to an epsilon, and there we are. But, Bill, there's something weird about this word. It has no accent. You mean when I pronounce it, I don't pronounce it with a Greek accent? <laughs> no, I mean that it doesn't have it. It has no accent mark. It's just. Oh, the accent mark. Okay. Yeah, it just has a smooth breathing to indicate that it's N, not hen, but there is no acute or anything like that. And the reason for that, Catherine, is that this word is part of a small group of Greek words known as proclitics. Mm -hmm. which are the opposite of enclitics. These words literally lean forward, wanting to connect with the following word uh, for the sake of rendering accent. Right. So that's why it doesn't have an accent, is because it wants to latch on to some other word. So that's why the word proclitic and enclitic, those two words have the same ending, clitic, because they lean on another word from... The Greek word for leaning, klino. Klino, yeah. But these ones lean forward or are before the other words, as opposed to enclitics that are after the word they lean on. So that's just something to keep in mind with N, that it does not have an accent on its own. So quick review, prepositions that take the genitive case generally show movement away from something. Prepositions with the dative case generally show something that's staying in one place. Prepositions with the accusative case generally show something moving towards something. Right. So those are the big broad rules or guidelines that we want you to have. So here in this lesson, what we have is a preposition that shows something staying in one place. So what case do you think it'll work with? The answer is the dative case because that's the case that shows things staying in one place. So here we have the preposition in, that's epsilon nu. We're going to have that preposition taking the dative case to express that something is in something. So we have our example sentence here, ho ailu rosestin in to oiko. Mm -hmm. The cat is in the house. The preposition in means in plus the dative case. That's our prepositional phrase that shows that something is in something. Right. And again, there's no movement involved. It's just the cat sitting inside the house. En to oiko. And that's what cats do best is they just sit around and don't move anywhere. <laughs> And Bill, our other example sentence demonstrates the fact that this works whether the dative is singular or plural. So it's not just limited to, oh, well, when this is with a singular dative, it means this. No, it's, it's with the dative, whether it's singular or plural. So, hoi hippoi en toi sagrois eisin. Exactly, Catherine. Here, the dative case is plural, so it's in the fields. So the object of the preposition can be singular or plural, but it's still just working with that particular case, the case that's appropriate for that preposition. Right. So the key thing is the case, and it can be either singular or plural. It doesn't matter the number. What matters is what case is it with. Well, let's look at one or two exercises. They already get the idea, but we'll just give them a little extra practice. Uh, number one says, ho hoi ros. In to oiko estin. This is going to sound crazy, Catherine. When I wrote this exercise, mm -hmm. you know, the pig is in the house. I thought, this is a crazy exercise. You know, what a wacky thought <laughs> for a pig to be in the house. That'll never happen, but it's funny to write about. <laughs> well, recently, one of my relatives was telling me about someone in our extended family who has a pet pig. Mm -hmm. And the pig just stays in the house all the time, like it's a pet dog or cat. Mm -hmm. My my roommate in college, her parents had a pet potbelly pig 
who stayed in the house all the time. So this exercise really isn't all that weird. It actually could happen. Exactly. Ho hoi ros in to oiko estin. The pig is in the house. And so what do we have? We have the preposition in working with the dative case. To oiko is dative singular. And same thing with number two. The horse is in the field. Again, we have the preposition in working with the dative case. To agro is dative singular. And this is different from the use of the dative that you see in exercise five, where ho emporos didosi ton hoiron to georgo. That one's just the indirect object that we've seen before. The merchant is giving the pig to the farmer. And that's a great observation, Catherine, because now they know two ways to use the dative case. They can use it as an indirect object, mm -hmm. like in number five, or they can use it as the object of a preposition as seen in exercises one, two, and three and four. So they know two ways to use it. And so when they see the dative case, they might have to look a little more closely to see how it's being used. Yeah. The fact that prepositions are another word does help. Right. The context will become clear once they see what's happening in the sentence. Exactly. <laughs> 